port nozzles. What are they? Why would you put them on tugboats and towboats? How do they work? Let's take a look. So a cord nozzle, it's got a few parts. It's got, it's basically, it consists of a hydrody hydrodynamically optimized shroud or steel structure around a propeller. And these two in combination, it can be called a ducted propeller. And so let's take a look at that. So let's draw one, right? And then the outer part. So this outer piece here, this is a court nozzle. The court nozzle was invented in 1931 by Luigi Stipa and then reinvented and refined by Ludwig Court in 1934, hence court nozzle. And so here's the shroud or the Coast Guard question you might see says steel structure around a propeller. That's how it describes a court nozzle. So let's call it a nozzle. So here's the nozzle, and then it's got a propeller, right? Let's draw this propeller. Let's do that better. And this propeller, it's called a Kaplan propeller. This scientist, if you will, named Kaplan, he was developing variable pitch propellers for hydropower, for making hydropower. So you take water up high and run it through a tube and it would go through this variable pitch propeller with these blunt tips. So it worked well in a tube and it's called a Kaplan propeller. You could just call it a propeller. So there we are. This is what you would see if you looked from on the back of a towboat or a tugboat, you look at the back of the court nozzle, it would look like this. We got the nozzle, which is that steel structure around the propeller, and then the propeller, which is generally a Kap Kaplan style propeller. And now if we take this, let's look at a uh, cross section. So take this, bring it out, turn it sideways, cut it in half, we'll get a cross section. So an interesting thing about this court nozzle is it, it's based on Bernoulli's principle. Right? You see how these, this cross section, it kind of looks like a wing, right? So here's your court nozzle. See this? It's got a wing-like shape. And this is based on Bernoulli's principle. There's so many places where Bernoulli principle comes into play when we talk about boats. And especially tugboats and towboats, because they're always, they're close to each other. You know, you got barges close to each other, you have boats, assistance towing, pulling up close to each other, you have shallow draft. A lot of times you're operating in shallow water, so they're squat and then it's confined, so you got bank cushion, bank suction, all of it has to do with Bernoulli's principle. It's the same reason airplanes fly. And it says, Bernoulli's principle states that when a fluid, like air or water, are both fluids, when a fluid increases in diameter, it decreases in pressure. So just like an airplane wing here, right? Air hits it, it goes faster on the top than it does on the bottom, creates low pressure. Pressure gradients always travel from high to low. So there's high pressure on the bottom, low pressure, it goes from high to low, you get this net force up. That's what's happening here in this court nozzle. And the end result, it produces a little bit of efficiency and thrust in this court nozzle. And namely, it gets more water to the propeller. So what happens is if there's more water going to your propeller, you can get more thrust and more efficiency out of a smaller space. So you got this tugboat, you want it to pull really hard, pull a high load, 
and have lots of thrust and do it in a small package, this quart nozzle creates more thrust in a smaller package so you can fit it under the boat. If your propeller can be gigantic, then it's not really a thing, you know? You want so more thrust out of a smaller package, you put a quart nozzle on it. And here's a cross section of the quart nozzle. Just like Bernoulli says up here, if air comes, or water in this case, comes across the nozzle and it increases velocity here, the water's going faster here than here. So you create just in front of the nozzle, slightly in front of the nozzle, you create a low pressure, right? And pressure gradients, high to low, all the time, always high to low. So there's higher pressure outside this nozzle. And all of it, it wants to be sucked into this nozzle, right? So here's your propeller shaft. How do you make that? Whatever. Here's your propeller shaft. And here's your propeller. And more water flows to your propeller because of this low pressure created by the Bernoulli principle slightly in front. So you end up with more thrust from a smaller package. And in addition, there's a slight thrust created just by the shape of the nozzle itself. So it creates lift, kind of like an airplane wing, right? But it's kind of in this direction. And so this th slight thrust nets out back because of the shape of the propeller. So it, it's more efficient, it generates more thrust than a smaller package. It's generally on tow boats, tug boats. The Coast Guard describes it as a steel structure around a propeller. Another Coast Guard question you'll see just says, um, it's installed on tugboats and towboats to create more thrust. So that is a quart nozzle or ducted propeller in a nutshell. I'm going to show you an interesting example of a quart nozzle and how it produces thrust. Like we could talk on the board all day about the theory behind a quart nozzle, but I want to show you a demonstration of the quart nozzle using a simple wing made out of paper. So here's a little demonstration of how a quart nozzle produces lift. It's essentially like a wing. And I know this demonstration seems a little bit far out, but it's really interesting how it works to me. And this paper airplane kind of blew my mind when I was little. So all you do is, you can see how that's a wing. You just make it into a circle. Like this. Tape it. And it starts looking like a quart nozzle, right? Got a little piece of tape over here. So here it is. You can see it's essentially a nozzle. And if there was a propeller inside it, it would look a lot like a quart nozzle, right? Watch this strange, this strange plane. Take the journey, trust the process, U.S. Captain's training.